Okay, hello everybody. We're going to create a gallery in our uh, web page using Fancy Box implementation. So we're going to um, show you how to be able to show your own pictures uh, a little more aesthetically. <laughs> That's a good word. Um, uh, just to make them look nice, nicer than just clicking on an image and seeing a bigger image. So let's start uh, by uh, going to FancyBox.net and downloading the files necessary. So uh, up here in the right hand corner and just ignore all that information because that's going to confuse you and go down to the download button and hit v2.1.3 or whatever version they happen to be on. And so I'm going to extract these files. Okay. And we've got I've got an area set up on my desktop that is a go, that we're going to use for our site. Okay? So if I look here, I've got an area now. So this is the folder that I have that I'm working in. I've just downloaded all the source files from FancyBox, and I actually have my own images folder here where we're going to be um, uh, where I have some of my own images stored in here, thumbnails and and larger files sizes. Okay. So inside this FancyBox folder that I just downloaded, they give us um, three folders. Uh, lib lib demo and source lib and source is the source files and the library files that we need to make this thing work so let's see what it looks like before we implement it on our own so if we go into the demo folder um, you have a bunch of their images and you have an index.html so if I want to check out that index.html it'll pop up their own page locally here and I can go and look at how they're so this is what a fancy box implementation looks like when I click on it right brings up the nice fancy look right and there's different ways they pop in so like this one fades in okay that one kinda clicks in they all come in different ways and they're different methods so you know just go read a little bit what's in there and decide which one you want um, some of them you know scroll differently some of them go side to side um, some of them have different titles that you can place on and around so when you find which one you have then later you can go and decide which one you're going to use we're going to implement all of them all the source code library for them and we're just going to pick one set of uh, HTML source from this page and implement it into our own uh, Dreamweaver layout so um, the first thing we need to do is uh, start one of our own layouts but if you have a web page that you're going to create this on already you can go ahead and um, use that web page to implement your fancy box files so let's go ahead and start a, uh, a new site here and we'll just create a, a nice little layout maybe a one column fixed centered header footer and um, let's put this in that folder where we have the fancy box stuff. Okay, so let me just name my style sheet. All right, and then save my HTML file. Okay. Oops. Make sure it's saved to the right place. Probably I should manage my site first, but that's okay. There's styles, there's index.html. I'm going to come down here and manage my site just to keep everything in, in line. So we'll call this fancy box demo. Doesn't matter what we call it. All right, but the location does matter. So let's head out to the desktop where I put it and go, oh, fancy box. There we go. Okay, so now our site is defined and we're ready to start working. All right. All right, so let's let's put the fancy box Let me go over here to code. Okay. <laughs> Uh, somebody's phone's ringing. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay, you got that. Good. All right. Cool. <laughs> um, so in the uh, um, in the source code, this is our standard page here. Let's go and open up 
the index.html of their demo page. So there's uh, a couple things I need to do to get this thing to work, and it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to open up the index.html that we downloaded from the FancyBox site so I can look at that source code. All right? So here's all the source code for that page. Now, if I look inside the head section of that page, um, you'll see that these uh, in the head section you have pointers to the JavaScript um, files and CSS files that are located in the lib folder and in the source folder. The one thing that's different, which is what we're going to change, is the fact that we have this dot dot forward slash here. The dot dot forward slash, if uh, for all us DOS users that remember going out to the command prompt uh, in Windows today, it's CMD, Charlie, Mary, David, and go out there and cruise your directories. But dot dot forward slash means that you go up a directory. Okay? So because remember when we downloaded all of our files here, all right, and we looked at this fancy box folder, the index was inside a folder called demo. So when it needed to point to lib and source, it needed to go up out of the demo folder and then go directly into lib source. What we're going to do is we're going to use lib source right into the root next to our index.html. So when we use those heading code pointers, um, we can delete the dot dot forward slash. All right? all a matter of preference there's no really one way to do it just as long as you understand that well that's just the way it is so of course I change it up here a little bit because I don't I don't really think I need my HTML file in a demo folder you could implement this you want uh, as your gallery page if it's not your home page and so maybe you say when I go to my gallery page I'm actually going to whatever domain name I have slash gallery so you create a folder called gallery and then that way you can keep your lib and your source in your root. But in all honesty, lib and source probably should be above your root. But that's for another discussion. Okay, and that's after you've got access to your hosting and you're able to understand the whole publishing, uploading of files, and you know that you have access to directories above the web server root, which would be out of reach of the public. You only want the the um, the, the files to be accessed that um, um, are going to be searchable by uh, Google in a sense and, and viewable as well. So in any case, like I said, that's another conversation for another day. Um, let's copy the lib and source folder out of that fancy box folder and let's put it right here in the root of our site. Okay, because we're going to be accessing those. And so then let's go and copy the head section information and the appropriate links that linking to the images in the demo folder that they already currently have. So inside the head section, you have this comment that says add jQuery library, right? That's this piece. And then the other, and they comment them very nicely. So you'll see this next section is for adding mouse wheel plugin if you want that. There's a JavaScript for that. If you want the add, well, you need the add fancy box main JavaScript and CSS files. And that's those two files. And then these other ones are add button helper, that's optional. Add thumbnail helper, that's optional. Add media helper. So those were different things that you may want to do with your site. Okay? But then after the pointers to all those files, you have a set of script code uh, that is doing all the fancy box implementation. So as you go through it and look, you'll see, oh, dot fancy box, different effects, and they comment it nicely so you can kind of understand. If you don't know JavaScript, it's probably going to look a little confusing to you. But the main thing to realize is all this information is inside the head tags. So don't go copying things that you don't need. Don't go copying things that are outside the head tag. You'll need everything inside the head tags, um, except for maybe title and meta, which you can keep your own title and meta or change them. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm going to copy all of this, and we'll bring it down, and it goes and it goes through all the different effects. I hear it says fancy box effects A, fancy box, uh, fancy box effects B, uh, etc. And that's the type, like I was telling you before. Some of them pop in, some of them fade in, and so essentially you don't need all this JavaScript code. But like I mentioned before, I'm just going to copy all of it, so in case we can go and experiment and try different ones, all right? So let's go all the way down right before the ending of the head section, which is right here on my line uh, 208. 
right? And then, of course, this little uh, uh, CSS implementation right here of the custom skin, um, which is fine. You could move that to your, well, well, you should leave it there for now, okay? So I'm gonna copy all of that. I'm gonna go to my layout that I just created, my brand new layout, and I'm gonna go to the head section up there, and I have a meta UTF-8 already, and I have an untitled title tag. So, you know, I can name that something, but for the most part, I'm going to copy all that code right in here on this line seven here. All right. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to get rid of all those dot dot forward slashes because it's going to have a trouble finding that. Because if it goes from where it's at now, if it goes dot dot forward slash from the index file, this is where we're at right now, and it goes up a directory, okay? Well, wait a second, up a directory is back out on my desktop, and that's not what I want. So I'm going to change that to not show the dot dot forward slash. All right, so let's take those out. And let's see, I know I missed a couple down here. Take out that one. That one. And I think I got them all. It's dangerous, so you got to be careful. You know, one little character make the whole thing break. You got left a dot or got rid of the one letter, and the whole thing breaks down on you. Let me uh, save that. Go back to where this is the HTML file now that comes from the demo. If we go back to design view, we can see that. Um, and let's grab their gallery that they have. Well, if I go into split view and say, well, you know, I want this gallery right here, you know, sometimes that's an easy way to figure out uh, how to jump to code really quick without having to you know, uh, scroll through a whole bunch of code. Um, so I let's say everything inside that paragraph right here. So paragraph to end of paragraph. All right. So copy that. And then you're going to put that up in the page where you want it to go. So let's say we want to put it right inside this paragraph right there. So we paste it right in there in that code view. Okay. So now if I save that page and preview that in Firefox, okay. Is that the wrong page? Let's see. Right. They've been source. Oh, ah, my library. See what I remember I said? If you miss one thing, dot dot forward slash is not. Oh, yeah, that's the wrong one. Wait, wait, wait. Something else is breaking it. Oh, let's double check everything in here lib source lib source okay all right so let's take that preview that is this the right page um, I know what we're missing. Let's go back into here. Uh, in the demo, um, we don't have any images, do we? <laughs> so let's take these for now and copy those and put those um, just in our root for now. But what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to change those, okay? Because currently they're act being accessed directly. So now, there they are. Uh, simple mistake, there's a lot of steps there, but now we have that implementation into our own set. So now the last thing we need to do is just swap out our own images with the ones that we just placed in there. So let me jump over here, back to my dream. So I don't need this demo file that they provided with us anymore. So I can just close that, I don't need to save that. And in here, I see that I have um, 
in my HTML, I have pointers. And uh, I named mine the same, but we actually put our, I named my images the same as they named theirs. One underscore, oh no, actually I, I used the B's and the S, but not the names. But I have them in the images folder. So the one thing I need to do, so for example, here is the name of one of the thumbnails, okay? Um, if I want this to be in here as the thumbnail, I need to put my image name in there. But in this case, I'm putting it in the images directory, right? And then the other file name is going to be right here. And that's also going to be in the images directory. And that's going to be the underscore B. So the idea is for you to, to change your file names um, with those that um, you're going to use for yours. Okay. All the other stuff like this in here is helping access this class name is important. This data fancy box group, um, those all help uh, um, display it the way it is. So now, if I go back to the page here and refresh it, you'll see that the first one has changed. Okay. So now, when I click on that, there we go. So that concludes the. Um, I could go ahead and add the rest of the images in there but you get the idea how to do that. So um, that concludes uh, looking at the fancy box implementation.